Welcome back to another episode of Wilds and Water Sailing. We are currently in Higgins Pass between Swindle and Price Island. After a couple of days spent getting to know Higgins Pass, most of which we spent gorging ourselves on berries and enjoying the small islands nearby, we set our sails and weighed anchor to make the next leg of our journey south towards the central coast. In order to safely navigate our way back through all the rocks and islets and out into the Laredo Channel, we had a lot of tacks to make. But with every day, we were gaining confidence in our maneuvering ability, and it felt really good to leave yet another challenging anchorage under sail. Another beautiful day to be sailing. Every day is a good day to be sailing. Although this is a really nice change after the winter. Long, cold winter. Where are we headed today? We're heading to the Goose Islands. Sail is going great. Yes. Yes, the wind is not what we expected. It's supposed to be northwest. 5 to 30. Right now it's southwest. 5 to 10. <laughs> but I bet it's going to pick up northwest as the day gets hotter. This is pretty comfortable right now. Yeah, it's not too bad. There was a long five knots. Our plan was to sail the 40 miles through Millbank Sound and the Golby Passage, with plans to arrive at the Goose Group in the early evening. Fortunately, the forecasted winds looked promising to get us where we needed to go. I'm trying to get some videos of the waves for you guys, but it's always hard showing just what size they are. They always look a little bit smaller. Let's see how it looks anyway. Yeah. 
good, don't it? It's been a long time. Yeah. has learned how to brace herself for the role he sees. <laughs> this light station is called McInnes Island and marks the division between British Columbia's central and northern portions of coastline. The light itself was established in 1921. However, it wasn't until the years of 1953 and 54 that the major light station was constructed. Following seas? Yeah. Just coming up on the Marshall Reef. Don't see any white water really yet. No waves breaking. We'll be anchoring between <laughs> Goose and Gosling. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, folks. <laughs> and so far, we've sailed the whole way here. I'm not going to jinx us for the rest of the way. But I think we're still going to have wind because this anchorage is pretty wide open. Don't look like we're going to get into any lee. Not much of a lee in here. No. Drop 30.
Did you? Yeah. I was looking at the beach. How am I supposed to know when to put my marker in there? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, you can back down on her. Okay, you're backing down on her, eh? <laughs> Smells like rice in there. Oh, good. I better check on that. You know me, just simultaneously sailing and making supper. Yo! Congratulations on our first ever no engine hour day. Hey! Yeah! What a celebration! What? Was like, I see you have not launched the day. Yeah. What's up with that? Trip to the pigeons. Captain Conley's guided kayak tours. <laughs> Conley's powered up, guided. <laughs> so far, five out of five stars. <laughs> Would recommend to friends. You hey, flashy? Got caught up in the season. <laughs> I don't know, four stars now. <laughs> what island are we going to? That's Gosling Island. That's the little one, Gull Island. Gull? Yeah, we're going to go to the beach straight ahead. First. Beach straight ahead. Yeah, let's find our own beach. What do you think, Moy? She's like, oh my god, people! Pet me! Pet me! Where they went? Moy Polo Camp. That's nice. <laughs> what a funny dog. Our lens is all foggy. It's humid. Where is the boat? Oh. Yeah. Backwood has disappeared into the fog. And it's not even foggiest yet.
This gray day with light winds was a great reason to hoist up our very colorful spinnaker and was our best bet for making any miles towards our next anchorage. and headed towards Starfish Island at the north west end of Calvert. Still a bit foggy, haven't really seen the sunshine yet, but the wind is perfect for some spinnaker jinnaker flying. Yeah. Yeah. And how many miles to go? Oh, I'm gonna guess 15. <laughs> Don't even want to look. <laughs> Wind's at light. <laughs> Our main reason for stopping at Calvert on our way south was to get in the water. A few friends had mentioned that Calvert was an equally magical place below the surface as it was above. And now that we were all set up with our dive gear and compressor, we were all set to explore. Our friends that had given us the advice to stop were not kidding. This was one of the most beautiful dive spots we had seen yet on the coast. There were forests of plumose anemones everywhere and curious rockfish galore. The visibility was outstanding, especially considering we visited during the summer months. It is always an amazing feeling to be included in a world so close and yet so seemingly foreign. To spend time with marine life, we usually only get to know if we pull them up on a hook. On this dive particularly, the rockfish were the best company. So curious and bold. There are nearly 40 species of rockfish found in the waters on the BC coast, and just over 100 found worldwide. Rockfish can live exceptionally long lives, ranging anywhere from 50 to 120 years old, with the oldest recorded off the Alaskan coast at a whopping 205 years old. Although they may seem prevalent, rockfish have a number of external threats, and as a result, many populations are dwindling. Most commonly, they are either bycatch or caught and released. Because rockfish can live in water depths up to 300 meters, if pulled up on a hook and line from even as little as 10 meters of water, they can suffer a barotrauma, caused when the swim bladder of the fish expands rapidly on ascent to the surface. Since this dive here at Calvert, we haven't done any hook and line fishing in inshore areas where the risk of rockfish bycatch is high. It's hard to feel so included in their worlds and then think of pulling them up on a hook, their swim bladders exploded. If we do catch one by accident, we keep it and eat it no matter what its size. There are now descender devices that can be used to increase the chance of survival should a rockfish be caught by accident. This device helps send them back to depth, giving their swim bladder time to compress again. These devices are now mandatory in BC 
and along with rockfish conservation areas and education and public awareness, are helping to give rockfish populations a better chance of success. Thanks so much for watching this episode. If you liked it, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, show your support by hitting subscribe. If you want to invest in the experience and support our creations, you can do so by becoming a patron. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.